containing his welcome message. Welcome to all, the online and present attendees in this first ISTAT workshop on methodologies in official statistics. This workshop has been organized in order to have a meeting place where peers can talk and debate on the latest issues on statistical methods applied in data production processes of national statistical institutes. ISTAT is a research institute whose objective is the production of high quality statistical information for policymakers and the whole society. This workshop is organized under the supervision and the support of the ISTAT Advisory Committee on Statistical Methods. It's one of the actions in order to confirm the ISTAT commitment on quality, one of the key mandates stated in the European Statistics Code of Practice. In this context, methodological research aims at the definition of new methods to be applied on the data production processes in order to improve the quality of official statistics. The fact that a statistical institute is not only a user of possible new methods discovered around the world, but an active player in producing new methods allows ISTAT to always aim and introduction the best approaches for improving the quality of statistical production. This fact improves credibility on how ISTAT produces data in the national and international scientific community, as well as the one world community of official statistics stakeholders. This workshop is a further demonstration of the importance given by ISTA to the need to invest in the research of new methodological solutions to respond to ever new and challenging needs in the new and complex production context. In this respect, it's important to underline that even if the active presence of ISTA researchers in the scientific community is a long-standing tradition, Methodological research in ISTAT had received a fundamental boost by some of the research infrastructures established in our institute for some years. The Advisory Committee on Statistical Methods is one of these infrastructures. Therefore, my sincere thankfulness and appreciation go to the members of the Advisory Committee on Statistical Methods who are leader statisticians working on different methodological areas of research in academic institutions and national statistical institutes. A special thank goes to the coordinator of the committee, Professor Daniela Cocchi, that retired from the University of Bologna in the last month after a long and fruitful academic career. Thanks also to the other committee members, Professor Natale Schlomo, University of Manchester, Professor Maria Giovanni Ronaldi, Università di Perugia, Mr. Pierre Lavallée, formerly Director at Statistics Canada, Professor Li Chung Zhang, University of Southampton and Statistics Norway, Professor Maurizio Lanzerini e Professor Brusero Luseo, Università La Sapienza Rome, Mr. Piero Falorsi, formerly Director of, at, at Istat, I take this opportunity to thank also the workshop discussants that accepted our invitation, Professor David Aizaza, University of Ottawa, Mr. Thomas Barg, Statistic Austria, Mr. Pete Das, Statistics Netherlands, and Mr. Fabio Ricciato, Eurostat. I'm sorry, but I couldn't be present at this important occasion for international discussion on the topics of methodological research for official statistics due to a commitment at government level hearing in the Italian parliament at the finance law. I wish to all participants a very fruitful workshop. Thanks for your contribution e buon lavoro a tutti.
Ok. Thank you to uh, uh, the ESAT president for this uh, uh, welcome speech. Now I leave the floor to Professor Monica Pratesi, uh, who is the head of Department for Statistical Production at ESTAT. Welcome, Monica, the floor is yours. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure for me to, to be here uh, with you. Hope that you are hearing me properly. Everything is OK, so I can start my, uh, my welcome to you. Uh, saying that uh, uh, today is an, is an important day because uh, we can focus on um, what is a, a strategic issue for, for the National Statistical Institute, that is uh, doing research in order to uh, optimize the uh, output of the, of the Institute. This output is composed by, as you well know, uh, data, indicators, but, but also analysis and reports and research in few words. So, um, Today we are focusing on methodological research, but this is not the only one we are doing in the in the ISTAT. There is also what we call thematic research. So this difference uh, between thematic and methodological objectives uh, must be, um, I think today in, in the in the institute must be a little made made a little bit more fuzzy. That is, obviously, thematic issues are thematic issues, and uh, when we are developing statistical models, we are doing what we call uh, statistical methodology. But as we are both, and, and, and everyone here is involved in, um, in producing uh, official statistics, uh, my vision is that these two areas must be more in interconnected and uh, they must go on jointly in order to produce uh, our the results of our mission that is official statistics now today and tomorrow i think that we are focusing on what we uh, call the backbones of the new strategy for the statistical production of the istat and these two um, and this backbone is composed i would say um, by the research and the results produced in two areas. The first one is the area of multi-source processes and the integrated system of statistical registers. So here, uh, different registers are linked together on the basis of clearly defined keys. We have base registers, containing structural information of the units belonging to the target statistical populations and also satellite registers, including more thematic issues, thematic variables derived from administrative sources or survey. Obviously, integration between registers and surveys provides information to estimate target variables using suitable statistical models. And on the other hand, surveys feed the registers, updating the already present variables in the, in the statistical records and, act, and adding, where necessary, predicted value for the remaining variables. So we need to harmonize, check the consistency, remodeling the surveys to take into account new estimation processes. So, Integrating information is the first area of research, but there is another area of research that is more focused on uh, the new census and uh, the social service integrated systems. We have important surveys. I, I must mention here the um, European uh, survey on income and living conditions, the well-known USILC but also the housing budget survey, the housing expenditure survey to be more precise today, the labor force survey, last but not least. So they must be harmonized with the current permanent census. 
And obvious, this is something involving more uh, thematic uh, word, the, the thematic word, because we have to focus on, on the variables. Particularly ensuring higher level of consistency of employment status data dissemination between population census and the labor force survey and national accounts. And in few words, we need to rethink the survey supporting registers and vice versa, uh, supporting especially the register based population count. But in any case, and, and now I, I need to project uh, just one, one slide. May I uh, share my screen? Are you seeing? Yes. Yes. In any case, we say that the proof of the padding is in the eating. To mean that something, and in this case, uh, all the results of our research can only be judged to be good or bad after it has been tried or used. And this to underline that uh, there is the necessity of putting in practice all the um, thoughts and processes and uh, uh, research done, done inside the Institute. Taking into account that maybe there is no need of trying to uh, figuring out uh, new problems. There are production issues and we can do together something about them. So you know that during the production process, uh, there are many issues that can occur that is poor quality, timeliness, um, unsold products. That means we are producing too many statistics, too many data, and maybe we have no the right focus on something that is very considered very important by the users. Sometimes there are interruptions in the flow of the production process, and this must be faced with. So I think that uh, thinking on methodology, we should focus uh, on quality problems, and this is done, and this is important. It is a, a strategic asset of our, of our institute. We are focusing on the total, the total error approach, uh, focusing on the defect rate due to coverage, measurement, sampling, low response rate, and in few words, poor quality. But we should also focus on what uh, are more related and called uh, output problems, that is uh, timeliness, in few words, and uh, how to manage with uh, uh, supply chain interruption and cost problems. And then, obviously, there, there are uh, idle processes that must be made more, uh, more quick. Uh, and this can be due to persons, machines, technologies, but also um, to methods uh, uh, that can be uh, better focused a bet and better integrated with the so-called thematic world. Then there are management problems, but this is not, uh, I mean, uh, the case. I mean, we are we are doing a opening a workshop that is for the development of methods. But according to me, um, these production issues, in some sense, must be kept in mind in order to have new uh, areas, new fields of research, uh, taking into account that the main areas of interest in the East at now are. Uh, these of multi-source processes and integrated system of statistical registers, and then integration of census uh, and uh, the social surveys. So th that's all from my side, and I wish you a very fruitful today workshop. Um, thank you. Thank you, Professor Pratesi, for this. Uh... OK, each time I start talking, something happens to the microphone. OK, thank you, Professor Pratesi, for your uh, welcome and for uh, your speech. Uh, I want only uh, before starting the workshop to 
um, reconsider one of the concepts that have been uh, already mentioned by you, by uh, President Blangiardo, that is uh, that methodological research is a fundamental asset in ISTA to ensure that uh, the best methods and practices are every time used to improve our statistical production processes. I would like to uh, very quickly remind some of the main assets supporting this statement. First of all, uh, as a public research body producing official statistics, ISTAT has approved a, a three-year strategic plan for research covering the period 2022-2024 and uh, indicating which are the priority areas for, uh, of investments for methodological and also thematic research, as has been uh, underlined also by Professor Pratesi. Uh, furthermore, ISAT promotes research uh, through some dedicated infrastructures, namely the research committee um, that uh, supervises and uh, monitors all the research activities which are performed uh, currently in ISTAT, um, the thematic and methodological laboratories, and uh, the unit uh, dealing with the experimental statistics. So the advisory committee uh, is not the only one uh, infrastructure supporting uh, methodological research at ISTAT, even if uh, this is uh, the uh, infrastructure that uh, supported scientifically this uh, uh, first workshop on methodologies for official statistics. The committee members uh, are national and international experts, uh, having a referring and orientation role on specific research projects carried out in ISTAT in terms of verifying their quality and alignment with the current state of research at international level and proposing and also directly carrying out advanced training courses for ISTAT researchers, the so-called master classes. And this afternoon we will have one of these master classes uh, by uh, Professor Aziza of the University of uh, uh, Ottawa. So uh, I want to underline the role of the committee, which is very important in order to strengthen the cooperation among ISTAT and other NSIs, and also with Italian and European universities, in order to share experiences and also new methodological solutions to common problems. So in conclusion, this workshop uh, extensively exploits the last three years activity of the committee on one side, and at the same time, it is organized on the basis of the ISAT priority areas of methodological research defined in our uh, three years research uh, plan. And that are, as you can see from uh, the agenda of the workshop, methodologies for new censuses, um, new permanent censuses, uh, methodologies for multi-source statistics, and in particular for the integrated system of uh, statistical registers, uh, which represent uh, at present uh, the backbone of uh, the, um, the statistical production processes at ISTAT, uh, methods for big data, and uh, the problem of standardization of statistical methods and uh, processes. As you can see in each session, which uh, corresponds uh, to a, a specific research area, uh, there is uh, a first paper which uh, provides an overview of the research activities carried out in ISTAT in this area, while a second paper deals uh, with one of the projects which have been recently discussed by the advisory committee in the same research area. Uh, you can also uh, note that uh, in each session, uh, two discussants are uh, um, uh, scheduled. One. Uh, external expert, external to ISTAT, uh, coming from the university, from uh, other NSIs, and also from Eurostat, and a second expert from, uh, from ISTAT, because it is important for us to have the point of view of the internal statistical production areas, as has been uh, also mentioned by Professor Pratesi in his, uh, in his speech. So, uh, before leaving the floor to the first session on uh, uh, methodologies for uh, 
new um, for the new census, which will be monitored by Professor uh, Pierre Lavalle. Uh, I would like to thank all the members of the advisory committee again, but also all the papers presenters and the discussants and also all the members of the advisory committee secretariat and the colleagues from the ISTAT communication and the IT sectors for their support to the organization of the workshop. So thank you to all of you and uh, enjoy the workshop. Pierre, the floor is yours. Bienvenue à tutti. Um, si. Uh, si. So, yes. So, so welcome to this first session. Uh, I got slides that will be put there. Ah, yes. yes. So it's uh, this session one on methodologies for the new censuses. Okay. 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 Uh, the Permanent, Italian permanent census is a very important project, as you know. It has been put there since years. It is now in place. It is now something that exists. Uh, but uh, because there will be some other papers out of this, let, let me just summarize what's going on with this project. First of all, the goal is to produce annual data, replacing the previous, excuse me, the previous this innocent cycle, using information from administrative say, sources integrated with sample surveys information. So the Italian permanent census is register-based, which is something that is really new. It uses three components, the integrated register system, the permanent population census, and the census and social surveys integrated system. So. Uh, so the integrated register system, what is this? As uh, we have uh, been, Ariet has just said, is the backbone of the system for production of social statistics. Target units, there is the usual residence person living in a household. And there are three classes of variables that are basically uh, of interest for the, the census. We have the complete variable, what is called the complete variable, maybe it's more the ones that are available from registers, the partially complete variables, basically survey variables, and the non-replaceable variables that are not directly available from NMI data nor surveys. There's the second component is the population permanent census. So, and this one provides fundamental information for, on the structure of the population guaranteeing a very high level of territorial and territorial granularity. So it means that you see, you see really what, this is the, the part that we need to have to, for, to have the data for those little kind of uh, places in Italy. It adds to the set of registered variables, the estimates from the sample surveys of variables that cannot be deduced from the administrative sources. And, Lastly, the census and social surveys integrated system. So it's the annual data for target parameters, those what they call the hypercubes, basically this domain of estimation, uh, multi-annual data for traditional parameters produced for every, every 10 years, and it's used for filling information gap of the population register for the estimation of target parameters, those hypercubes that I was talking about. So, yes. So, just to say that you see the advisory committee on statistical methods has been aware of this project since a long time ago actually from its beginning and there's there's a lot of papers actually that was discussing this various issues uh, concerning the census uh, so i will just summarize like uh, give you the list of papers that were presented to the committee for which we needed to discuss or give our opinion and advices on this. So uh, they are uh, chronologically uh, put there. It's not all the papers, only the ones that are relating to the census. First of all, Stefano, 
Stefano Falossi gave uh, some uh, papers called Census and Social Service Integrated System. Then Marco, Marco Di Zio, uh, balancing method for ensuring time and space consistency of demographic estimates in the Italian integrated system of statistical registers. And there was another paper on integration of administrative sources and survey through hidden Markov models. You see, something we I keep quite high level. So in 2017, again, Paolo Righi and Piero Falossi, the anticipated variance as a measure for the accuracy of complex multi-sources statistics. In 2019, in June, Stefano again. Now he gave an update on the social and so census and social surveys integrated system. Then there was a, a paper on hierarchical Bayesian model for quality check of the Italian population count by administrative data. In 2019, November, still. So again, another paper. Uh, the Italian permanent census issues related to population count estimation when data are affected by coverage errors. Now we see very important problem related with, to the census. Then the comparison of machine, machine learning techniques. Now we're getting into, you see those machine kind of things. You see those artificial intelligence uh, and standard statistical method for the imputation of the attained level of education based on in the, in the, in the base register of individual. 2020, June. Then again, the update by not only Stefano now, but you see a bunch of others on this uh, subject. Uh, then uh, we talked about R packages for uh, calls, an R package called sampling strata. Uh, then we talk about imputation of the attain level of education again, um, a comparison between machine learning and standard techniques. So we are getting deeper and deeper on the, on the subject. Then another paper on current direction for the research on record linkage in, at ESTAT, something that is essential for this census. 2021, June, census counts estimate geocoded at subdomain levels, something again important for those, uh, those uh, population estimates, very detailed ones. Absolute population bootstrap approach for variance estimation of population counts with over, under and over coverage in order to measure the precision of this stuff. Then labor force survey non-response indicators for registry under coverage estimation. Now in December, again, planning the post, the post 21 permanent census of population announcing according to a responsive adaptive survey design approach. Then a proposal for special consideration index. Also a longitudinal and cross-sectional analysis of data in the integrated system of statistical register. You see all this stuff that is related. You see, it's not only to say we plan a census. We have plan There's so many things that we need to think of and so many things that were brought to the committee. Again, and then in May 2022, uh, several data on labor status, a problem over or, or resources, looking at for an integrated approach for good quality and consistent set of estimates. And then a, a statistical framework for register-based population size estimation. And many more other papers not necessarily presented at the advisory committee. Of course, this is the top of the iceberg. A lot of things were done here at ESTAT. A lot of things, not all, not all the things that have been presented to the committee, which is normal, we but uh, we were interested by what was done, what is done, and what will be done through the through this super kind of project. And now for this session, there will be three papers presented here. First of all, a paper by Stefano that will give us an update. You say another update? Yes, another update. Why? Because the thing is evolving. You see, the thing is increasing. More and more things are going on in this project. So Stephanie will be talking about the census and social of integrated system and update to where we are at now. And then Marco, Marco and Daniel, uh, Daniela Filipponi will talk about multi-source statistics in the Italian permanent census. And then my former colleague, but my friend, David Aziza. I will uh, talk about an overview of new approaches and the topic of and discussion. So, uh, 
So, so let's begin. Uh, I just take uh, this opportunity to ask the people that is attending the workshop online that if they want to uh, make questions uh, or clarify, ask for clarifications, they can uh, uh, write down uh, uh, their messages in the chat. And so uh, at the end, uh, we will be able to collect them and ask everything to the uh, presenters. I will remind the speakers that there you have 15 minutes. Okay. Quindici minuti, uh, uh, and I will time you. Okay. So, uh, and I will uh, show you some papers. Okay. okay? So all the, all the, all the I oh, have uh, five minutes, so uh, I have a look. At okay. Me too. Okay. Grazie. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Pierre, for the presentation, a very exhaustive presentation. The aim of, of this paper with uh, Michele Dalò is to give an overview of the process of the census, uh, and in 15 minutes I will touch uh, the principal uh, component, uh, components uh, of the process, uh, of the, um, this uh, process. Um, so this is outline of my presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, this is this technical time. I'm starting the time one. Uh, okay. 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 Uh, so this is out the outline of my presentation and um, um, the new production strategy. In 2016, uh, a deep methodological review of the official statistical production system began, which uh, moving from a traditional uh, functional scheme of production based essentially of uh, sampling uh, survey as primary source of uh, 
production and using administrative uh, data as auxiliary information uh, to one based on a multi-source approach in which the different uh, sources are integrated together so we uh, it for each process consider uh, primarily and second resources um, uh, uh, primary and secondary resources uh, uh, that may uh, differ from uh, one case to another. In one case, primary resource uh, can be, could be uh, administrative data, and in the other, and uh, sampling data as supporting this information, and in another uh, situation of the production process, uh, sampling data still remain the the most important uh, information and the auxiliary information uh, is carried out by administrative data. In any case, uh, the different information is uh, exploited together in order to produce a better quality um, pro statistical product. Then the new strategy under the population census aims to integrate the information uh, store it into register with those uh, specifically collected by census, master sample surveys. Uh, they, as I uh, said, uh, as regarded Pierre, the integrated system of registers, the backbone of the framework, uh, and it is built at single record level, uh, main uh, obtained through massive integration of administrative data, uh, opportunely uh, corrected and uh, integrated. But also surveys uh, are needed when the subpopulation of interest has, are not covered by administrative sources. Um, the first two pillars of the framework are the set of registered variables for which the complete variable uh, for which the primary input sources are from administrative data in which the administrative data have uh, almost the same uh, definition uh, of the target variables. And um, the, uh, we have large part of the population while secondary input sources are from sample data. Uh, these are included in the population uh, register and allow to obtain just some of the census counts of interest. Then we have the census survey variables for which primary input sources from sample data collected with the master sample. Uh, this is planned to provide the remainder of the census counts of interest characterized by high granularity in terms of territorial and sectoral detail. Um, exploiting, master sample exploits administrative data through uh, corrected and uh, um, uh, filling the uh, population register as secondary input source uh, as auxiliary information. Uh, the third pillar of, if, uh, of the framework is uh, are the social survey variable for which the primary input source uh, is from sample data, while secondary, secondary input sources uh, may come from master sample and population registered data. If between these two master sample population data, we may have also some overlap, and we uh, should uh, uh, have uh, approaches of choice between uh, uh, mass, uh, master sample data and population registered data. These play the role of auxiliary information, um, completing uh, the um, overall framework. Um, so the, um, uh, this also survey extend uh, the census information uh, with reference to um, um, the extent of the census information with reference to some fundamental variables. Uh, uh, are arising from annual and subannual social surveys like uh, the cited uh, labor force, uh, but also aspects of daily life um, survey. 
Um, um, then the, uh, the overall framework is a general informative and methodological infrastructure. We can consider all this, uh, we can uh, um, consider all this information like the census and social survey integrated system. It depends on the point of view. All the system could be called the census and social survey integrated system because in, uh, within this uh, system we integrate uh, the different formation or we should uh, uh, consider the last part of the system uh, uh, we could call uh, like census social survey integrated. I mean, my personal uh, opinion is to present all this project like the census social survey integrated system. Um, the, for this system, uh, integrated estimation strategies can be used uh, to combine in, the, in order to combine in an efficient uh, way different sources of information. Uh, aimed to increase uh, the accuracy, either in terms of efficiency, but also in terms of uh, bias reduction, um, uh, and also uh, to aim the, uh, the process, uh, the chosen process should be aimed to uh, guarantee uh, consistency, consistency among the estimates obtained uh, between this um, an important challenge in order to get consistency. Um, uh, the uh, census and social survey integrated system may be uh, viewed uh, in uh, is uh, organized as a two-phase sampling scheme. Uh, the first sample, uh, the master sample, uh, is the first uh, phase, uh, uh, producing sense of figures, and the second phase uh, is um, is devoted to um, um, social surveys, labor force, aspects of daily life, and the seeds. So we have reduced the um, the set of surveys uh, introduced and. Uh, in the system from the initial startup of the project. This is a general view of the general presentation of the system showing the integration of population register with the registered variable, master sample data, and second phase social models. We consider also a standard population register, which play a role in the new estimation process for the habitually resident population. Uh, in particular, for the last aspects, the number of people belonging to USA resident um, population uh, has been initially computed using as primary source the information collected with master sample, um, uh, supported by auxiliary uh, living, uh, uh, supported by life signals as auxiliary. But since 2020, after the COVID interruption of the census, it is identified removing and active records in the standard population register, including non-resident work and student on the basis of administrative life signals, the hypothesis of absence of under coverage of the standard population register. So we abandoned the capture-recapture uh, uh, scheme uh, in order to introduce. Uh, in this context, uh, uh, sampling uh, master sample non-contact are used as, uh, uh, are used as, uh, um, uh, are not used at all for, are only uh, viewed in the process, but not have uh, um, a, a precise role. Uh, the set of registered variable, gender, age, marital status, come from demographic sources, educational level, and employment status, 
are obtained are registered variable uh, using uh, um, traditional, uh, in the first case, we uh, use uh, a, a model based estimation uh, with micro level prediction uh, using master sample data for non available populations, subpopulation, while employment status is obtained by uh, a micro prediction. Uh, uh, using a master sample labor force admin data within a uh, in the Marco model uh, um, uh, process. Uh, census survey variable uh, such as not employed, status commuting uh, are primarily obtained uh, are primarily obtained um, uh, from master simple data. In, in this context, indirect unit level smaller estimator are applied uh, due to the extreme granularity of the domains of research, so which make it impossible to, pro impossible to produce reliable direct estimates for all domains of interest. In addition, some of them, such as municipalities, are not structurally covered by the sample because not all smaller municipalities are survived each year, but only one-fifth of them. Um, in this case, multinomial small area model with fixed effects are adopted as working model for the estimation phase, which is similar to a sort of mass imputation process while the corresponding direct estimates at a more aggregated level are not introduced as benchmark in the process, but only as an element of consultation and reference. This uh, is a very complex uh, process. In this table, I resume uh, every, uh, every cell of this uh, uh, table should be a paper uh, alone. Uh, so I uh, made a resume, uh, a summary of the different uh, uh, methods applied. Um, I have no time to get in more detail for social survey variable. I have to stress to say that uh, um, the uh, aspect of the AI module is a nested, completely nested phase sample, uh, while labor force and silk are instead partially nested, the second phase samples. Um, uh, ADL has been already selected as nested module for the first cycle of the census, in which both, both municipalities and households are selected among the sample municipalities. Uh, the, the complexity of this design is given by different stratification that can be used in two, the two surveys and the use of stratified two-stage sample design for both surveys. Uh, I will uh, um, left la, la work for and silk are still uh, overlapped only at the first stage. Um, I have no time to deal with the uh, first, second block of the system, and uh, I uh, jump on the conclusions. The estimate of interest for each table derived from the block blocks uh, can be computed by design-based method as long as the sample is sufficiently large to yield, yield real estimates. Small area methods should be applied when the sample sites are associated with a very detailed table is not suf sufficiently large to produce reliable direct estimates. Uh, this, this is last slide. In this case, it is necessary to better investigate how, how small area methods can be used within this framework considering that an overall consistency among the different detailed and marginal table that need to be produced for census and social surveys must be guaranteed. Multi uh, a possible solution could be multivariate estimation methods that could better integrate the variable information, modeling a correlation among target variables, Furthermore, multiple random effects uh, in multivariate projection type estimator could allow to consider marginal effect uh, into the estimation process, process and to, um, to get uh, um, benchmarking uh, or a better reference of benchmarking uh, 
a more uh, stringent um, benchmarking with the, uh, direct estimate at uh, uh, for marginal domains of interest. The random effect could be used to model time and spatial correlation used for, for improving out of sample domains, for example, no response, non, uh, non self representative municipalities that are not uh, observed every, um, every year. Thank you. And Grazie mille, te, Stefano. Uh, the next speaker, he, ah. hey, Marco. Okay. Uh, yes, Marco will talk about multi source statistics in the Italian permanent census. Multi source statistics. Okay, thank you. Um, so this, this presentation is about multi-source statistics in Italian permanent census, and you, see, you can see that uh, we have two names, my name, of course, and uh, the other is uh, Danila Filipponi. Uh, we lead these two projects uh, about uh, the um, estimation of uh, the attended level of education and uh, um, occupational status. But of course, there, is, uh, there are many other people working uh, that have worked on, uh, okay, worked on these uh, projects. Uh, so for instance, uh, we want to thank uh, Romina Filippini, Gaia Rocchetti, Roberta Variale, Ugo Guarnera, and so on. There are a lot of, and of course, also from the production department, uh, because uh, there, there was a, a very, uh, strict uh, um, connection with them, of course, because our project is to produce something that is useful and uh, um, that makes sense, uh, not only producing uh, models, complicated models, nice models, but of course our goal was the output. So, um, the presentation is about uh, this, uh, as I said, these two variables because they uh, have uh, two kind uh, two two way of approaching uh, multi-source estimates and we thought that was interesting interesting to put together in a presentation so the context now uh, it's quite clear because uh, it was already uh, presented and uh, commented by uh, some um, someone before this uh, presentation uh, so there is the population census and the use of administrative data. And uh, uh, since there are some, uh, let's say, uh, gaps, of course, as natural uh, in administrative data, uh, there are also the possibility of using uh, sample surveys that we call census sample surveys to fill this gap, these gaps. Um, of course, after the integration of these uh, data sources, uh, we have uh, uh, some variables in the register. And uh, as uh, stated by Stefano, uh, some are uh, mainly obtained by using administrative data. And uh, so, some other important variables are obtained by using also uh, census data, so integrating uh, sample survey data with administrative data, and uh, uh, in these cases, in those cases, it was necessary to use uh, statistic, statistical models for for integrating uh, these uh, different uh, um, data sources. So let's go. Let's give a, a look, uh, very at a very high level of uh, very general level of these two. Uh, variables and uh, in the estimation they attained the level of education uh, the data sources was uh, uh, administrative data coming from the Ministry of University and Research 
and uh, we also used the uh, the Italian census at 2011 and uh, the sample surveys that I just mentioned, the census sample surveys uh, carried out uh, in these years. So the, the situation is quite uh, mm, complex. Uh, we just, I just introduced three uh, groups, but uh, of course there are many other uh, features, many other um, peculiarities um, in the population. But we can, we can look, we can uh, see that there are three main groups of uh, uh, data of units in the population. So there is a group A where there are people with administrative information on uh, level of education and uh, this information uh, uh, is about uh, uh, with the time lag, um, time, T minus two. If we are lucky, sometimes we have also T minus one, but uh, so there is a lot of information, right? Uh, there is the attendance of the course uh, that people is attending, so it's very rich information. Then there is the big group that is the group B, that is people that are not enrolled in any course uh, from 2011 to the, the time of uh, the, the reference time we are working on, uh, essentially people that have uh, that are out uh, of the, the, the attendance of a course, or also people um, uh, attending courses that are not covered by the administrative data, because there are some courses not covered by, not recorded by uh, the, the ministry because there are regional courses and so on. And then there is a small group of people, approximately 5% of the population, that are people that are neither in administrative uh, data sources nor in census data 2011. Uh, in this case, for this small group, we have not direct information on the, on the attended level of education, and we, this is the group more critical in, uh, uh, because, uh, uh, because of this lack of information. So these are just uh, uh, three classifications we have adopted, and of course, for each of these subpopulation, we have used uh, different covariates and also uh, sometimes different models. So as I said, that's an important remark. Administrative information that is available to us is um, affected by some gaps. Some qualifications are not, for instance, included, as I told you just uh, two minutes ago, that is uh, all these courses that are not at national level, but are in fact important to give a, a level of education that they are uh, managed at uh, a uh, regional level. And there is, as, as just I said, time, a time lag with respect to reference time. So for these reasons, we, need, we had to uh, use a um, sample survey because, of course, we, in this case, we have uh, information on, uh, 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 on the variable that we are dealing with. And so to correct and to, to deal with these problems. For the uh, educational level, we have used uh, um, a model based on uh, the idea of log linear imputation. And the aim is to um, estimate the conditional probabilities of the educational level at certain time t, given a set of covariates x. So the, the aim is to estimate these conditional probabilities. Um, uh, these probabilities are estimated uh, by using a log linear model. Uh, we apply the log linear model uh, to the contingent, contingent tables. Uh, and then from the expected counts, we derived the conditional probabilities. Um, once we have estimated those probabilities, the uh, educational level is, uh, is uh, estimated at the micro level, so for each unit, with a random draw from these conditional probabilities. This was done in order to, um, to preserve as much as possible the, the, um, 
the probability distributions of uh, observed data or data used for the models. So I just introduced uh, before the three groups because it is interesting to understand that the, the, comp the situation is quite complex and we had to deal with different, uh, uh, with different um, settings. For the, first, for the first group, the group A, that is the group having a lot of information because we know what people is attending, which course is attending in that year, and we also know what is the, uh, the, the course, the, the level of education at times uh, t minus two time, or as I said, sometimes more likely in uh, time t minus one. For, the, for those people, we used only administrative data. We moved, we shift our um, model and uh, estimated the probability of having uh, 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 education, a higher educational level Estimating on data, uh, as you can see here, uh, at times t minus t minus two, given t minus four. So we shifted the window of uh, uh, the time we applied that, and then, then under the idea that these probabilities are quite stable in, in the in the in the years, that is in fact something that we have noticed in our data, we applied this model to. Um, shifting by two years. Good. While for groups B and C, we uh, use the log linear model uh, that I've just uh, um, introduced by applying to data um, and using the, the, um, the estimated level of education observed in the sample survey as a target variable. Uh, for the estimation employment status, it's quite a bit more complex. Uh, the data sources are uh, labor force surveys, admin data, and census self sample survey. Uh, in this case, um, uh, these three um, data sources are uh, treated as imperfect measures of the target process. This is quite different than before. And uh, on these three uh, measurements, uh, it was applied uh, a lead and variable models, and more in, uh, um, uh, in particular, uh, it was a Markov um, random process uh, in order to, um, to measure the, the um, say, the, the behavior in the time of this variable. Uh, you can see that uh, mm, uh, there are uh, some covariates and uh, other covariates like indicated in this case by Hess accounting for different quality levels of the different administrative sources. When we use, uh, when, the, when the level model is used, uh, uh, two parts are needed to be specified. The first part is about Latin part, Latin model that describes the distribution of the Latin variables that is in fact our target, that is in fact our focus, our objective, because we want to predict the latent variable given the observed uh, variables that are imperfect measures of this quantity. And then of course we need a measurement model that describes the conditional distribution of the observed variables given the latent variables. So the latent model is a mix of Markov models and uh, as I told you, the, um, the employment status L for each population is a first order Markov chain that is uh, uh, to, um, yes, to measure the dynamics of uh, this phenomenon that is uh, important for this uh, variable. Concerning the measurement model, uh, there are some uh, uh, assumptions that were um, introduced. The measurement processes are independent. Uh, measures in a lab of force and mean data and census at time team are independent with the corresponding measures at different times. And uh, also in this case, once the, the, the model is estimated, the uh, occupation is scored through a random draw from the estimated conditional uh, 
distribution of latent variables given an observed configuration of sources and covariates. So there are these are two different strategies. In the first one, uh, we have a supervised approach. One of the data sources can be taken as, as a reference. That is, uh, it provides, uh, we, we can imagine that it provides a correct measure of target variable. And the other, uh, this is a kind of super unsupervised approach. And uh, uh, in order to overcome the deficiencies of sources, uh, that are considered the multiple sources, multiple measures of a true target variables, a model, a latent variable model is uh, uh, carried out. Okay. But there are some common features. The first one is that uh, the, the variables are predicted with a random draw by the conditional distribution at a micro level. That this approach, of course, increases the variability of the data but has the advantage of better preserving the probability of the distribution of the variables. And, uh, and it is important also to mention that uh, this advantage, advantage may transform to a risk because users can be tempted to use the micro data without any limitation. So for this purpose, we need to provide uh, measures of quality and flexible tools for measuring quality. And uh, this is an open problem. So we have just uh, uh, we have just started to studying uh, an analytical approach, approach for the first case, and uh, for the second case of uh, occupation, uh, occupational level, occupational status, uh, uh, it was proposed a multiple imputation, but. And as we all know, uh, its use about multiple computation in national institutes is still a problem, especially for managing and even more for accepting the idea of producing more potential registers, it's a kind of multiple registers. Uh, so th that this last point is certainly a, a, certainly a point that where more research is needed. So thank you. for the third speaker. So David Aziza will present us an overview of new approaches on the topic and uh, on this topic and of course discussion of this. Uh, by the way, uh, just for a advertisement this afternoon, uh, David will also give us a master class at uh, uh, 2, 2 30, uh, 14 uh, 30 uh, uh, on uh, you see the, this data integration procedures for handling non-probability samples. So, uh, okay, so. Thank you very much, uh, Pierre. Uh, first, thank you very much to the scientific committee for their kind invitation. I'm happy to be here. Um, 10 days ago, I didn't know anything about the Italian permanent census. <laughs> And I realize that it's a very complicated thing. Uh, there is a lot of work and a lot of uh, thinking that uh, has been done recently. Um, I'm not sure I've understood everything. In fact, I'm pretty sure I did not understand everything. Uh, but I had the thank you for the opportunity to uh, uh, read these two papers, one by Stefano Falorzi and one by Marco Dizio and uh, Daniela uh, Filipponi. Uh, in uh, Stefano Falozzi, of course, he talks about combining administrative and survey data for the permanent census, and uh, also uh, Stefano Falozzi sent us a, a paper on the mind, which I, I, I'll talk about a, a bit. And uh, in the paper by uh, Marco Dizio and Daniela Filipponi, uh, it's also, com as it was mentioned, uh, combining administrative and survey data for the imputation of uh, at nine level of education and uh, occupational st status with, uh, and I will talk a bit about various estimation that was uh, mentioned. So uh, the, first, the, the, the first paper in the Italian permanent census, uh, we combined administrative and survey data, and the reasons are a significant reduction of the cost and a reduction of the respondent burden. Those are the main uh, reasons. And there is a fairly sophisticated methodological statistical framework with the three main components the IRS, Integrated Register System, 
which uh, essentially, if I understand well, uh, uh, integrate data from administrative sources and surveys at the individual level, so there is some form of imputation. The PPC, Parent Population Census, produce set of estimates, in, in particular via small area uh, estimation techniques uh, that cannot be obtained through administrative sources, and also the CSSIS, Census and Social Survey Integrated System, uh, other sets of uh, estimates also based on small area techniques. Uh, so in the, in the PPC, the goal is to produce a set of uh, uh, values at the individual level, so it's a micro-level approach, and the requirement for the set of estimates produced by the PPC um, are uh, 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 accuracy, so uh, efficiency and consistency. So accuracy uh, uh, in, or validity. So we, we, here we, we need, we are doing data integration, so we need to, to, uh, to postulate a model, so we, we make... A, many assumptions when we do data integrations. So this is where model diagnostics becomes uh, very uh, uh, crucial, central. Uh, as we know, the MSC of, a, of a, an, an estimator can be expressed as the variance plus the bias square. So the idea here is to make sure that the bias square, uh, uh, its contribution to the overall MSC is small. Uh, and I'll come back to this when we talk about the imputation, the, the mass imputation for ALE and OCC. Um, for efficiency, we want the estimate to have a small variance. We want to reduce the, the variance. Uh, and for and, and consistency, uh, it was not clearly mentioned, but I'm, I'm, ex I, I'm assuming this is internal and external consistency. External meaning that what we call often benchmarking. We want the sum of the domain estimate to be equal to the overall uh, domain estimate. And internal would mean that uh, if we have y1 plus y2 equal y3, then we want also the estimate to to satisfy this relationship. So this is, the, the consistency is fairly mechanical in the sense that we can always uh, obtain uh, this consistency by uh, using any uh, calibration software and, and, and specifying the pr appropriate uh, set of calibration uh, constraints. So the, the main issue is accuracy uh, and efficiency that we want to achieve with data integration. I have to say that in, in Canada, we, we, we have a few examples of, of data integration, but they are much simpler than what we have in the permanent, uh, Italian permanent census. Uh, very often, it, it, uh, you know, it's, it's, we have one probability uh, sample and one non-probability sample, and it's done uh, via uh, a mass imputation or, or um, a calibration. And we, we had some success. Uh, and in some cases, we didn't have success when we did data integration, and mainly because we lacked powerful auxiliary variables. And I think this is the main, uh, uh, main recipe for it, it's to have powerful auxiliary. Here, we seem to have some powerful auxiliary variables, which is not always the case in what I've seen at StatCan. Um, so coming back to PPC and C CSS, uh, CSSIS, uh, this uh, estimation procedure involved SA method, uh, methods. And, uh, and Stefano uh, sent us a, a, a paper on the package, our package called MIND, which is multivariate model based inference for domains. And it does multivariate, so we have multiple uh, survey variables, uh, but with a common and unique set of covariates. And I was wondering when I was reading that, is it a limitation uh, in practice? Uh, 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 because we have to use the same set of covariates for all the variables. So I was not sure if, in this particular example, that we, it, it was a, a serious limitation or not. But the nice feature is that it, it allows for different correlation structures, including spatial uh, correlation between levels of each random effect. And also it provides some estimation of the MSC. So pretty uh, nice. But since, since we, uh, with data integration method, as I mentioned, we have to make a lot of assumptions. Uh, we are relying on models. So a lot of effort uh, should be placed on model diagnostic to, de to detect departures from uh, model assumptions. So for example, at StatCan, uh, there is a macro GST uh, that includes a, a small area estimation component. And this uh, uh, module offers many diagnostics uh, for the fair Ariot model. Uh, and uh, for example, it, will, uh, it, it, it does uh, the plot of residuals against a set of predictors and predicted value. Uh, and so if, 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 the, if the assumptions are not satisfied, then we can always uh, do piecewise linear regression. So this is part of, so of, of, the, of the module. 
it also gives us a plot of standardized square residual versus predictors and predicted values. And again, if the assumption are not satisfied, then this means that we don't have the right amount of heteroscedasticity, and finding the right amount of heteroscedasticity may not be easy. But if we don't have the right amount of heteroscedasticity, then the estimate of the MSC may be biased. And, and so this is an accuracy issue here. Also, it does a normality of the standardized error, which is probably less critical here. And we are doing also some, uh, when we fit the model, we, we do some smoothing, the variance smoothing. And the variance smoothing is usually done by fitting a model where the, we have the log of the sampling variance as the response variable and a set of predictors or function of the predictors as the independent, independent variables. So this smoothing model has to be also validated uh, uh, and I was, when I was reading about mine, the paper that uh, Stefano sent us, uh, my question was, does mine propose or will propose in the future a set of diagnostic in the context of multivariate models? Uh, maybe there is some research there to, to, to be done and it may be useful to, to users. Another, and, and I want to mention also that at StatCan, when people do a small area estimation, 95% of the time is devoted to model diagnostics. That's what people do, trying to validate the, the assumptions from the model. Another important issue that arises in small area estimation for both uh, continuous variables, but also for uh, count data for discrete outcomes, we may have this issue, is the problem of outliers. And outliers affect the efficiency of estimators. So it does not introduce uh, bias, but it can make the estimate uh, uh, very unstable. And so uh, in, the, in the GS, the, the, the small, uh, small area module, there is an outlier detection uh, 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 where we, we can detect influential domains in the case of area model or influential units in the case of unit level model. Now, uh, the, the problem of outliers seems to be much more important in unit level models. In, case, in some cases, we also found that uh, uh, it may also be an issue in area level model. So there is a vast literature on robust small area for unit level models. And there is a recent paper by Bertarelli and, 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 and colleague where we uh, propose corrected m quantiles uh, estimators for both continuous and count uh, data for discrete outcomes in general. Uh, but n not much has been done for area level model, maybe, maybe because area level models are less vulnerable to outliers. But it, it happens. We've seen uh, uh, happening in, in practice, not as often as unit level model. Unit level model, we, uh, we and, 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 and these methods, for example, the method we propose in, in this paper 2022, can improve a lot on the efficiency of the non robust estimator. So the question is. What about uh, uh, robust multivariate small area estimation model? So is there a, a, a robust, can, can we develop a, 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 a robust version of this mind uh, to handle outliers and how to do the outlier detection? So this was something I, I was also uh, thinking. At the end, when we do um, uh, data integration, as I mentioned, it, it, we, often it's mass imputation or propens some propensity score weighting. Um, and regardless of the approach we are going to use, and uh, uh, resulting estimators are vulnerable to model misspecification. Um, and I will talk a bit more about this this afternoon. Uh, so how can we get some robustness against model misspecification? Well, one way is to relax the assumption and use non-parametric or machine learning methods when we do mass imputation or propensity score weighting. Um, and I'll talk about this a bit this afternoon. Uh, uh, often, when we, we, we do the when we write the papers and we, we study the methods, we often make the MAR assumption. In other words, the, in the non-probability source, we assume that what we see in the people who participated is the same condition. Once we condition on the on the on the x variable we have, we assume that the the, the relationship for the participant is the same as the relationship for the non-participant. And we know this is a very strong assumption. So what can we do in a data integration uh, um, context uh, to relax a bit the MAR assumption? Well, one way is to have recourse to multiply robust procedure. And uh, I'll mention that this afternoon. And in the case of NMAR, if, uh, if MAR is not a tenable assumption, 
this method, uh, multiply robust, uh, tend to lead to a better estimator, although inconsistent, because all the models will be misspecified than the one that we would have obtained under a single misspecified model. In other words, taking an ensemble of misspecified models is often better than taking a single misspecified model. Uh, another thing that has been recently uh, uh, proposed by Kim and Shaw 2022 is multiply robust propensity score weighting, assuming not missing at random. Right? But there is always a price to pay with not missing at random, is that we need an independent validation sample with the same measurement, y and x, which is a fairly strong assumption. Otherwise, we have to, so there is no free lunch in some sense. So otherwise, we have to uh, uh, you make use of uh, instrumental variables. Uh, 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 and again, this is based on fairly strong assumption. Uh, uh, and if the assumptions uh, are not satisfied in the context of instrumental variables, then we could, we could be in trouble. Um, so, so this mass imputation was used uh, in the context of this, uh, in the second paper, for uh, mass imputing the uh, ALE, attained level of education, um, and occupational status in the Italian base register of individuals, so the what the BRI. And the variables, as it was mentioned, come from uh, three uh, sources, the Ministry of Education, University, and Research, the 2011 census information, and some sample survey collected since 2018. And here, I think the mass imputation is fairly justified by the high amount of detailed information. So if we go, and I think this was mentioned, uh, this is a table uh, where we have uh, this information. For everybody, we have the information uh, on the BRI. And so everything in white is available. Everything in gray is not available. So the idea is to predict the ALE here for everybody. So this is the mass imputation. And as it was mentioned by Marco Dizio, there are three groups of people, the active and the inactive people. And uh, these variables are available for everybody. I think this is gender, age, um, country of citizenship, and place of birth, if I remember. And, uh, and here we have ALE at T minus 12. Uh, we have also the ALE that was self-declared and, 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 and so on. And depending on the, on the so we have uh, uh, several patterns of, of uh, uh, predictors here, and we, we apply different models depending on the predictors we, uh, we have. And so we have three groups of people, and at the end, as it was mentioned, uh, uh, imputation is done by, through uh, log linear models, uh, and where we estimate the probability, and then we randomly generate, so there is a random imputation, uh, the ALE, ALE status with the, the estimated probability coming from this log linear model. And in fact, if we use a saturated model, because we cross-classify all the X variable, then it's essentially equivalent to random hardback imputation within cells. Um, and I think if some cells are, are empty, if I understood, uh, or, or, uh, then we, uh, uh, there is some collapsing. Uh, we use a subset of covariates selected through a cross-validation procedure. So one of the uh, is issue is, uh, as Marco Dizio mentioned, is variance estimation. Those estimates uh, after mass imputation are, uh, uh, suffer from some variance. And how do we estimate this variance? So they came up with the, uh, for, for ALE, they came up with a nice analytical uh, 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 formula, um, uh, which is V-hat, I, I, I didn't give the formula here, but essentially a, a variance that accounts for both missing data, the non-response, and also the imputation, imputation because there is this random uh, uh, draws. And we have here the, the, the categories for ALE, and we have the V-hats. So this is the variance estimate. And these V-hats were fairly close in, the, in their sim So this is a, from a paper in DZO, Filippini, and Toti 2022 that was presented uh, two months ago in a conference. And um, so those are the V-hats, and this is a, they show that it's close to the Monte Carlo, they, they did a Monte Carlo simulation. So, uh, and so this analytical uh, uh, formula seemed to uh, uh, um, track well the, the total variance. But as we can see here, the variance are extremely small. And um, and if I, I computed just for fun the margin of error, right? Uh, if we want to construct a confidence interval, and at the end, uh, we see that extremely small margins of error. So when we have small margins of error like this, it may be due to two things. 
at least one or two things. Maybe a very large sample size or very powerful covariates. So the imputation model is highly predictive. I think in this particular case, if I understand well, I'm not sure I, I fully understand, but it's because we have very large sample sizes. And the, the reason uh, I, I was thinking that is that if we estimate the population mean, so we are estimating the proportion of uh, individuals in each category of ALE. Okay? So it's a mean, so one over n, cap n, and here we're summing, so sum over s, s are the, sam the, the unit for which uh, they come from the sample survey. And we have the y, we have the ALE for the y. And for the other ones, we don't have, we impute. So s complement is everybody else that we are, we are going to impute, and yi tilde is the imputed value. So the estimator after imputation is, can be viewed as the combination of the sample mean and the mean of the imputed values. And if I understand well, I'm not sure, Marco Di may, may, may tell me if, I, if I'm wrong, but the, the part n over n, n is the size of the sample, is fairly small, less than 5%. So actually, this, and, and so I'm, this, I'm assuming this is close to one, so at the end of the day, this estimator is not far from the mean of the, of the imputed values. In other words, this does not weight a lot in the combination. And I think this is why, and because we have very large sample sizes, um, uh, this is why we have such small variances. And the problem with such small variances is, again, if we go back to the MSC where we have the variance plus the bias square, we have a high efficiency. But if the bias square even even slight, then if we construct confidence interval, they will of course be very far from 95%, even with a very slight bias. So this is where the model needs to hold if we want to have valid inferences. Now, imputation of occupational status is more complex, uh, as I mentioned, because the, 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 all the data sources are assumed to, to suffer from measurement errors. So uh, as Marco Dizio mentioned, we, they use the, a mixture of Markov models. In this context, uh, uh, an analytical approach like ALE will be much too complicated. Uh, so they, they made use of, a, of multiple imputation. I think there is a mill procedure. I ha I, there is a paper um, in 2020. I, I didn't have a chance to read, so I just read what is in, in this EO, uh, paper and the Philippine paper. Um, now, the, one of the things with multiple imputation, and it, it could be a, a nice approach for, for, to tackle this kind of problems, one of the issue with the, uh, so this is the, the Rubin's variance formula. So we have the within plus the between. For this variance estimator to uh, be consistent, to, 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 get, to, to be valid, the imputation must be proper. And I don't know if milk is a proper imputation method, but proper in the case of ALE would mean that within cells, before doing random hot deck imputation, we would uh, select like a bootstrap sample, it's, it's like an approximate Bayesian bootstrap, a bootstrap sample uh, of respondent, and then select from this bootstrap sample, and we do that all the time. So this is typically when, so how to, to obtain a proper version, I, I don't know again if milk is, is proper, but how to obtain a proper version in the case of a mixture Markov model may be fairly difficult. So, uh, but one thing that could be interesting to, 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 to see is to apply multiple imputation for ALE and, <laughs> and uh, uh, to apply uh, multiple imputation for ALE, uh, the non-proper one, and see how it tracks. We, we, we know now what, what, what is the, the, this is a pretty good estimate of the variance and see how close using multiple imputation with a non-proper uh, uh, imputation of ALE uh, is typically, I'm assuming we will underestimate, but it's still interesting to, to see. Uh, but for sure, for o o OCC, I don't see anything else. Or maybe bootstrap could be uh, another, uh, but bootstrap in this particular uh, setup seems also uh, complicated. So that's why multiple imputation is probably the way to go, but how good it is, it's not clear. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, now, uh, after uh, listening to Stefano, Marco, David, we have 
Now the, we will have the point of view of the statistical production department. So, uh, uh, Saverio Gazzelloni, see, Gazzelloni will talk to us about this, this point of view. Thank Where you very much. Are. Thank you very much, Mr. Lavarle. Uh, many thanks to the advisory committee for the invitation. I'm directly involved in the production processes regarding the population census and many social uh, household survey. So I'm very interested in uh, today's discussion uh, on the proposal, uh, on the conceptual proposal uh, contained in the two paper. And I'd like to, to give a little contribution uh, to the discussion about the, the impact that the content of these uh, two papers have, not only on the internal uh, process of our institute, but also to the external in the production process. The papers presented today are very, very important with regards to the production process because uh, uh, they impact directly on the quality of the data, on the data treatment process, but also on the networks of the interviewers. That is a very crucial uh, aspect for the quality data construction. And also, uh, they have uh, also an impact on the respondents. The methodological innovation are part of the revolution in production process that we are following in our institute. Uh, in fact, in the field of household surveys, including the census, obviously, the shift from a system only based on sample surveys to a system that increasingly adopts administrative source, integrated with survey sources, very important, is uh, underway. And uh, as you uh, see, some estimates uh, we have to disseminate are produced directly from the register, from statistical registers. So we have a landscape very different from the past. And this challenge is uh, great because uh, uh, concerning two uh, aspects of the production process. The exit from the sign loss of the single survey, that is the first uh, factor and the opportunity to make coherent estimates produced by different production processes. Uh, in this sense, the population census and household surveys uh, are carried out uh, within the integrated system of registers. The first paper pre presented by Stefano Falorzi is on uh, the integrated census and social survey systems. Uh, I like this uh, approach because uh, it combined the results of the surveys with a strong user of administrative sources and addressed these new data sets with the use of complex models. In this sense, the census becomes a reference point for surveys and surveys can reach the census. In the context of the permanent population census, the integrated use of the administrative source guarantees robustness to the population counting. This is the basic of our work. On the other hand, the master samples, the, the large samples used for the variables not contained in the administrative sources, becomes the reference for the other social surveys. And this is very important, as I already said, for the production process and especially for the external impact that our data collection operation can have on other subjects, institutional subjects, for example. For the production process, the integration of the census with social surveys is essential to raise the level of consistency of the estimates produced by different surveys that also have different survey designs. In the past, we uh, gathered out the, the, the social surveys in different ways different silos, and now this new system can help us to have a more coherent uh, framework in order to produce more harmonized uh, estimates. In this, with reference not only to structural variables like sex, age, marital status, and so on, but also to specific and more complex variables, for example, uh, position in the labor market, commuting, and so on. The integrated system, therefore, supports the harmonization of the process and this of the estimates produced. But I like to uh, stress, to under, uh, highlight uh, especially the external impact that this new methodological approach can have on different subjects. 
With reference to the external impact, I must underline the importance of the integrated system with respect to the attempt to reduce the statistical burden on citizens. For example, in this regard, in the first paper, uh, the idea of having adaptive designs that exploit the Cowen component, Cowie component uh, even better is very, very important because if we uh, can uh, obtain a higher level of uh, response rate by Cowie, this is a reduction, a direct reduction of burden on citizens. It, was, it is also important to ask for less information and take them, this information, when it is possible from the census or from other surveys. An integrated uh, system can help on this. But it is very important to reduce the burden on the interviewer's network uh, for data collection. The census and many household surveys use municipal, intervie municipal interviewers. Some surveys, large, uh, such as labor for surveys, USILC, and uh, household budget surveys, use private networks. The problem of the quality and continuity of this network is very important for the quality of the data produced. Uh, you have to consider that uh, over one year, the network of municipal interviewers is engaged in the first month uh, from January to April with the surveys on uh, the aspects of the daily life. Before the summer, there is a, a thematic survey like uh, discrimination, cultural participation, and so on. And from October to December, there is the census. So we have a very continuous work for this interviewer. In this sense, it is essential to be able to have a general design of harmonization or integration production processes to reduce the burden and therefore support the quality of this network. From this point of view, the integrated system introduced the possibility of coordinating the samples of the various surveys to optimize the field work. Also, the integrated design helps to stabilize the networks and therefore have more continuity of work, increasing loyalty, fidelity of the networks and professionalism of interviewers. The second paper is very important because it deals with important methodological aspects of the new statistic production system. The integrated use of sample surveys and administrative sources requires the use of complex model for the production of estimates, as we have seen. This aspect also implies the need to invest of human resources that are directly involved in the production process. In other words, uh, I like to stress that it is no longer possible to consider the methodological work completely unrelated to the calendar of production. There is a strict relationship between production and methodological work in this new context. A strong integration specialist and transversal skills is therefore necessary in the design and development phase of the methods that must produce official data for the dissemination. We have to deal with the problem that if the times are those of production with very specific time constraints, it is necessary to invest in the training of new professionals and in the production of applications that make the resource involved in production progressively autonomous. Okay. I go to finish. As can be clearly seen from the example reporting the variables on employment status and level of education, the great power of these new approaches leads to the production of statistical registers with micro values at the single unit level. This is a huge potential for analysis and dissemination, even of unplanned domains. But to do these tools, are also needed that allow the evaluation of the results obtained in terms of measuring the error produced by the integration surveys, administrative sources, and registers. It is therefore important to provide agile tools that allow to calculate the quality of the aggregates produced by the statistical registers, also for different unplanned domains. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we are exactly 30 minutes late, so uh, we can, there's one option is to, to at least 
break and uh, had the full discussion, but I will not do this, of course. Okay, so let us uh, suppose that we'll have, we're, now is there, there's supposed to be the floor discussion and rejoinder, uh, so let us take 10 minutes for this and it will leave 20 minutes for the coffee break. Make sense? I guess so? Ah, yes, yeah. agree. Okay, great. Okay, so any question, comments from the floor? And I guess there will be a mic. This yes. Ah, yes, yeah, grazie. Ah. First of all, thank you very much to all of the speakers for their very comprehensive presentations. I enjoyed a lot. Uh, I have one question just to say, mentioned was multiple imputation. And we all, you know, all of this is very problematic. And uh, what is especially a problem, not, not a problem from the methodological, methodological side, but from the side of, uh, let me say, sell out to users. Uh, very frequently, uh, producers of statistics uh, in, from the production side, this multiple approach, this multiple imputation approach, uh, I, I'm, and uh, as well this uh, mass imputation approach is seen as a little bit problematic because users might not trust that much then into the results of that. So it's as well a problem of statistical literacy, literacy in that sense. So how do you promote those uh, the estimates when, when you are uh, uh, delivering here figures based upon that? Um, Thomas, um, yes, in a sense, I, about multiple imputation, I, I agree with your comment. In a sense, I, I wrote in the last slide that, in fact, we have problems with, uh, with the idea of uh, digesting <laughs> the, uh, the fact that uh, we officially produce some data that are officially uh, multiple. So that's the idea. Uh, that's the, the real last comment I wrote on the paper. On the other end, it is true what uh, uh, Professor Aziza said, that uh, multiple imputation is probably, uh, at the moment, uh, some, an approach that is really um, uh, really useful, really, really uh, developed to manage uh, uncertainty, having micro data, and uh, even more uh, with not unplanned uh, estimates. Because in principle, you have m your uncertainty is in, in these multiple micro data. So it is, of course, one of the best approach. Uh, but uh, we, uh, as, a, as official institutes, uh, actually we not provide, we do not provide any estimates uh, following uh, multiple imputation. The study that was done was carried out by Dania, Dalila and uh, Bush Houghton. So it's a very interesting study. Uh, they they try to use proper multiple imputation by using a, a parametric bootstrap, so uh, bootstrapping the parameters. But uh, no, that's a, that's a question for all the community. Uh, I haven't any answer to you. Uh, concerning mass imputation, because uh, the, 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 in a sense it is a synthetic you know, production of uh, Units that uh, when we started um, building our statistical registers, uh, a question was uh, just that of uh, uh, understanding which variables, to which extent, we can include variables that are imputed, and also in the uh, as well in the um, presentation by Professor Aziza, it was mentioned that. Uh, 
um, we uh, followed this approach when the uh, information is particularly rich. You have to imagine that for all this data, we have a lot of admin data. So we just need to, uh, let's say, make a, a small correction for uh, updating the information in one year, or uh, uh, also in case of uh, occupation, there is, uh, of course, a discrepancy between the, uh, the measures, but they are not so far from each other. So it is a small correction. Of course, there are other variables that can be massively imputed, but we haven't included in uh, the business, in the register, because uh, there, are, there is more uncertainty in the prediction. Also, in the example uh, showed about the measurement of variance, and again, uh, Professor Aziza mentioned two possibly reasons for this small variance, and one is a large sample and the other is uh, uh, rich information. Yes, that's another important question, uh, point, because with rich information, we have a small prediction variance. That's an important point. That's my... Sì, grazie mille, c'è uh, anche il uh, uh, Stefano. Just uh, to say that uh, for us, uh, in particular, for evaluating a certainty of registered-based registers, it's, in, it's very important uh, um, because we, we consider complex uh, process uh, integrating different, different types of information coming from administrative uh, sources as well also um, from sampling uh, data. Uh, we have uh, an, in prog uh, an in progress project aimed to um, to develop uh, different uh, methodologies in order to compare uh, different methods uh, for uh, evaluating uncertainty in this uh, complex context. For example, uh, because for us it's crucial to have uh, um, also a methodology in order to evaluate uncertainty, in order to produce uh, easily, if possible, is the quality is good, uh, uh, tables from directly from registers, but we uh, is, we need um, uh, so we need to to deepen these aspects, and we have uh, uh, we have started the project in order to make a comparative analysis between uh, uh, methodologies like. Um, uh, multiple imputation, but also a resampling method, also considering, for example, methods based on uh, uh, anticipated variants uh, uh, proposed in the paper by um, uh, Aleva Piero Righi, uh, if I remember, in which he is considered uh, um, uh, anticipated variants, considering the, the, the two, uh, the two uh, the two uh, sources of variability, model, model variability and also sampling uh, distribution variability in the sense uh, that they develop a global uh, mean square error uh, approach, uh, probably. Uh, so we um, have started the project in order to try to apply this in a comparative uh, uh, in a comparative uh, environment, uh, different methodologies for, uh, for example, a tenant level of education, but also in the case more complex of uh, um, uh, estimation of uh, employment uh, status uh, under uh, the Marco model. Uh, uh, okay. Can I? Yes, <laughs> Stefano. Uh, is there yeah, see, another question? And it will be the 
Ah, okay. Okay. Very quick. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. So very quick again on the uh, multiple imputation topic. So quick question to David is Professor Aziza, if this uh, multiple imputation is already in use, is that can or is it still in the research space? And uh, to, to, to the ISTAT speaker, um, I understand that the, you know, there is some hesitation in, uh, in the dissemination of multiple uh, data sets. But on the other hand, it is also a um, mandate of Statistical Institute to educate the user, you know, <laughs> to have an edu educate the user uh, to, to, operate, to, to understand that um, there are diff this, is we this is one way to communicate uncertainty. I'm wondering whether publishing under the label of experimental statistics, multiple uh, data set obtained from multiple imputation, might help as an intermediate process, as an intermediate step towards you know, a dis future dissemination of, of official statistics and might help to the users to digest, or I would say, to get educated. In the same way as communicating answer, other uncertainty uh, let's say is an important part of the mandate of official statistics. I think uh, this is also a step that, with some courage, maybe must be taken. And experimental statistics might, might be helpful. In a, what do you think on this? Well, okay. Um, I think this uh, could be a good idea that of uh, going this direction, and in order to make people aware of the possibility of having good statistics, even if you are looking at different, uh, let's say, data sets. You will not look at different data sets, but in, it's in principle. Uh, so not going, uh, I mean, introducing this idea in experimental statistics, that could be a viable way. Um, yeah, I, I think that. Uh, but uh, my last slide was this uh, about this more research is needed. Yes, in fact, this is the, the idea because we have from one side something that could be usefully uh, used for the problem because we are moving, we are changing from a, a static world of producing aggregates or producing as estimates with a certain uh, variance, um, precision, we are going towards uh, micro data. Also, if not released, but register based estimates, uh, micro data with each micro with its uncertainty. And so it's moving, it's changing. Multiple interpretation is uh, certainly a, a, pos a potential answer, but uh, there is something cultural that should be changed and uh, we can go in the direction you suggested that could be an idea. But uh, I'm sure that people uh, are the, in academia can also think about some other solutions. Uh, for instance, the paper written by Aleva and the others tried to, to, to attach to each unit a, a kind of block of uncertainty and then uh, putting together these blocks to to try to give an an an, an estimate. It's an idea. I don't know, but uh, I don't know if other people from academia can tell something about that. Okay, grazie, Marco. See, adesso adesso è il momento per il caffè. See, di un caffè. See. Okay, uh, let us reconvene at. Uh, 11.30, if possible, okay. So, hey, uh, again, thank you for the speakers. Thank you. Yeah.
now I have to go to the production. Ah, process. yeah, yeah. Now you need to produce something. <laughs> Bye. Okay, grazie, anche. Okay.